Okay, hope everybody's doing well. <clears throat> There's another <clears throat> another little project that um, I'm working on, and <clears throat> if this this is a power supply uh, to a London BLU80 sound signal processor, and the signal processor <clears throat> um, that's that's the power supply. This is a, a picture. The signal processor <clears throat> is running the, um, well, this one was running the main <clears throat> speakers in in what they call uh, the Performance Arts Center um, <clears throat> at a school, and um, uh, at Edinburgh, Edinburgh North. And what happened was, <clears throat> the unit the unit would turn on. And here, let me show you. I have one. I have one unit because I got two of them that are uh, <clears throat> that are exactly the same. And so it would turn on. And then what would happen is it would say restarting. And it'd go through the whole restart process, and then it'd come up, and then I don't know, 30 seconds later, it restart. <clears throat> and the other thing is, these lights that are supposed to be yellow were always blue uh, <clears throat> but anyway that's the unit right there this is a unit that that basically has the program uh, to run the main speakers in the auditorium and they have a <clears throat> left right center channel speaker um, <clears throat> excuse me center channel speaker sub <clears throat> sides and rear so uh, the gentleman who kind of is in charge of all computers and networking here at the school <clears throat> came to me and asked me, hey, can you check the unit out? And I said, well, yeah, you know, I, I need to just, just bring it to me. And so he goes, well, come check it out. So I went, I went to see it. And sure enough, it was, <clears throat> it was turning on and off. Uh, not necessarily turning completely off, but it was recycling or, or restarting, basically. <clears throat> and I told him, I said, look, I can pretty much guarantee you that there's some capacitors in there that have gone bad. <clears throat> but I, I, I got to, you know, you, you got to take the unit out. <clears throat> and what had happened by this time, they were renting a, a sound system because there's mariachi performance and there's all kinds of different performances going on there. All right, which I understand. <clears throat> but that one unit had totally knocked out the auditorium, so they couldn't use their own sound board, they couldn't board, they couldn't use the speakers in there, or whatever. <clears throat> so, so someone brought in, I don't know who brought in the sound system. And <clears throat> well, that kind of went by the wayside, and I started helping them, helping them out with some other speakers in the, in the gymnasium. <clears throat> that that uh, they they blew uh, the the speakers and the amps there in the gym, gymnasium are totally underpowered and not enough speaker for a gymnasium. That's a totally different story. So finally, <clears throat> after I helped him with that, which which by this time probably about a month went by, and I asked him, I said, "Hey, what happened to the processor? You never brought it to me. You, you know, I probably could fix the thing for less than twenty five bucks." And he tells me, no, you know what? The school has spent, I don't know how many thousands of dollars. He, he put out a, a number, I think it was 80000 um, for a new soundboard and new sound processing units. And I'm like, what? He goes, well, it's not just for the performance art here at our school, but it's for, the, for another school, too. So... <clears throat> um, Edinburgh has uh, four high schools, and I think two of them, the, the same thing happened. <clears throat> so, I don't know, about a week ago, week and a half ago, I finally, uh, today, today's what, March 8th, 2023, so about last week sometime, I went over <clears throat> and um, was helping him with the subwoofer, because the subwoofer didn't want to work there in the, uh, in the main auditorium. Uh, with that new board, and we figured out it was a <clears throat> it was a routing issue. 
So he has he has to kind of route it. The digital boards work a little bit different than <clears throat> than your normal normal boards. You you have to tell you have to tell the board whether it's a scene or whether it's a a layer or whatever. There's different manufacturers call them different. Um, you have to tell <clears throat> where you want to send the signal to, and then that routes to say the subs or that routes to left channel that routes to right channel. Anyway. Won't go into into all that. <clears throat> so finally, I told him. I said, "Give me, give me the uh, the units." He goes, "Ah, come on, they're right here. Take them." So I brought them over, and and um, messed with them. And first thing I did was I started taking voltages <clears throat> of the known good one. And so the known good one here had this. Uh, this is a header right here. So the first first one was like 1.65. This was ground. The next one was five volts. That's what runs all the electronics. The next one was ground again, and then 15.5, 15.7, 56 volts, 16. <clears throat> uh, I can't remember what this one. I think this was six volts. Oh no, here it is. 10, 10 volts. I think it was. And then finally, negative 16. Well, <clears throat> on this power supply, on the on the one that was not working very well, the five volts was at 4.1 and <clears throat> electronics that run off five volts will not go to work <laughs> they will stay home and things will not function so i traced it back <clears throat> i traced it back to this capacitor and this regulator right here and and i said you know what i guarantee you this capacitor is bad so i pulled that sucker out and sure enough let me see where they're at. <clears throat> it's not just not just that one that's bad. Let me show you where it, where it went right here. It went in right here. That one, the <clears throat> the I, I think the capacitance is bad, but also the the ESR the equivalent series <clears throat> equivalent series resistance or some companies call it series resistance. <clears throat> and I'm I'm of the type that capacitor equivalent resistance should be less than one one ohm <clears throat> um, yeah two, it's two, it's anything greater than one ohm it's 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 way too much well then I started to check let me, let me just go back to this and I'll, I'll, I'll put this this way so that y'all can see it that way we can go back and forth so I checked that one that was bad I pulled this one out just today that one's also the ESR is bad and I want to say the capacitance is bad also. Pull this one out, ESR is bad, and also <clears throat> the um, capacitance. Pull this one out, and also the ESR, it's bad. Uh, so I'm in, the, I'm in the process. I've already removed this one. I've already removed that one, that one, that one. <clears throat> I got some new ones. Uh, I've checked these, and the ESR is like no, no resistance, OK? So <clears throat> I'm not only going to check change those there, but I'm changing this one right here. I'm changing this one, this capacitor, this capacitor, that one, that one, that one, that one, this one, and that one, and this one right here. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's just, might as well do it. Now, what does this guy cost? <clears throat> if I'm mistaken, this, this guy right here was... God, I want to say a dollar. I found them as cheap as, uh, this is a 470 microfarad to 25 volt capacitor. <clears throat> and I found them at Mosier, which is not a, not a sponsor. I found them at Mosier for 88 cents, the cheapest, I think. And the most expensive one <clears throat> was, I don't know, $1.20? Okay. So it takes one, two, three, four of these. So let's just say they're a dollar. That's four bucks. Plus shipping, whatever. You can figure it out. <clears throat> then all these other ones here were either 39 cents or 50 cents. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm pretty confident that that's going to gonna fix the problem. I did not check this guy out. Uh, this is a fairly large cap. I probably should. Uh, I'll, re I'll replace all these, put them in, and if my voltages are good, 
I'll do some comparison from this one to the known, the other known good, and <clears throat> the other known good one. I know you can see my finger; it's it's there in the background working. Uh, signal processor there, <clears throat> and and if they're good, they're good. I'm just going to let it go. But <clears throat> it's amazing, you know. I I wish. Uh, one of the easiest fixes that we could have done was if, if I would have known this, say, two months ago when this happened, I would have just switched out the power supplies like what I did two days ago. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they would have saved a lot of money. So, you know, but I'm, I'm not the one making these calls. So uh, I just I just happen to work here. Uh, <clears throat> I work here for Edinburgh. Uh, school district. Um, I teach electron ACDC electronics and some ro a robotics two class and a, a pre engineering course. So, but that said, uh, <clears throat> I'll go ahead. I'm not, I'm not going to videotape. You know, uh, changing all these parts out. Um, it, it, if I can do it without having to move a lot of stuff, I will. But it, you know, I have to be moving this thing and stuff and. Uh, so and it's a little bit, little bit cumbersome. All right, I'll uh, I'll come back when I've soldered them all in, and then plug in the uh, the unit to to the London Blue Eighty. So let's see if I can do this right here. We'll go down. Turn this guy this way. Um, all right, let's go six three volts at ten microfarads. <clears throat> so let's check to see ten microfarads, sixty three volts, twenty plus twenty and minus twenty. That's that's the the tolerance of most capacitors. And so I'm going to go ahead and place this guy. Again, capacitor, do you have a negative? And now I'm going to press this guy to see what the capacitance is at. Bad. Look at that. Okay. And then the ESR. Yeah, still good. But the ESR part of it. <clears throat> but capacitance is definitely bad. So plus, minus, okay. So <clears throat> they do make some less expensive machines like this that are not as nice as this. This was a three thousand dollar machine back in the day, ninety three, ninety four school year when when the school bought it. Um, they do not make this anymore, uh, but there's other companies that make. Uh, Machines like this that I've seen them as as high as ten thousand dollars, and and those you know <clears throat> are extremely reliable and stuff, and they're used for mission mission quality type stuff. So, but, all right. Anyway, see y'all later. Okay, so this is the London Blue Eighty signal processor and <clears throat> excuse me the power supply uh, basically I kind of switched the power supply uh, from this guy right here uh, I, uh, this one this one was actually the one that was used um, at the per performance art center for the main speakers in the main auditorium and so um, and then this was this this guy this one was the one that was used for other speakers and so this power supply that i took that i put in here used to be <laughs> in this guy over here and i kind of swapped out this the, the power supply from this unit and i put it into that unit and and that unit uh it's it's working because the power supply was was what was bad uh, and so what was bad in the power supply were all these capacitors um, <clears throat> I kind of showed that in the, in the other video. And so the, the unit is working now. 
Oh man, it's it's incredible. Uh, I think I've uh, I spent um, no more than eighteen dollars on on capacitors, and you know the the powers that be went ahead and just bought a whole new soundboard and new processors and everything, and spent a lot more money than twenty bucks or fifteen dollars. Um, I'll come up with an actual price and and put it up on on the video when I when I. Uh, when I finally upload this video, but it's working. Um, uh, the program is still in here. Uh, you'd have to download their whatever from London Blue, um, the BSS people. You'd go to their site, download the program, put it on a laptop, plug in, <clears throat> and then see and save it. And that's what I've told. Uh, what I've told. Uh, the gentleman who's kind of in charge of all this. The, the fan, it's not on. The fan is definitely going bad. Uh, it, the bearings are bad on it, so I, I didn't plug it in. But uh, it's amazing how capacitors go bad. And this is all, I changed all these capacitors right there. Uh, the, the ones that were that were really bad <clears throat> were these guys right here, the all those right there. And there was a couple of other ones that, that tested bad. So, but... Uh, all right, um, you know, just a little bit of troubleshooting, if you know. Uh, obviously, if something else was wrong over here, I, I wouldn't even know how to troubleshoot that. Uh, and I don't even know if there's anybody. More than likely, there's probably somebody that repairs these things. Um, but most people will just buy another one. You know, I'm not sure. I don't even know what the price is on these on these things. So, all righty. Um, I'll catch up with you guys some other time. Later.